February 16th, 2015, and um, <clears throat> I was just talking about <clears throat> this other government thing that then Mike wanted to try out, and I wasn't going to keep videotape taping some of this, but I don't really want to drag this out. I'd rather talk about this and get it out of the way. So I am just going to go ahead and um, <clears throat> and finish talking about this government thing that he did. So um, so basically, he, you know, I I had gone to the kitchen and and, and drank out of a plastic bottle of some kind that he said were his first shakes. Super for his, for his protein shakes, and <clears throat> and then when I got back, he was um, standing in the stance that that his dad and these government men would stand in um, next to the fridge when they were wanting me to do this blowjob stuff when I was a really little kid, and um, it was something that they had practiced on me over and over and over, and. <clears throat> One of the things that I have explained in the past that they did with that is that they would either drop socks, um, which is something that like Robin Beck told when he raped him the first time. He had a pair of uh, athletic socks on the floor of his car that I was supposed to notice that were in front of me. Sometimes they would drop like a sock or, or two socks, it depended. And um, other times they would drop a condom. So they kind of would, they would associate the same these things together. Uh, it pretty much meant the same thing, whether it was socks or a sock or a um, quote unquote a sleeve, that kind of a thing, or a condom um, that was dropped. It had the purpose of getting the same response out of me. I mean, I don't remember that it meant anything different, whether it was a condom or a sock. So, Basically, I was supposed to jump to action and um, and do this blowjob for them. And then if I didn't, um, I was, it wasn't like, <clears throat> it wasn't like I was just sort of um, insulted by them, like, or harassed or, or hit a little bit. I was um, really being tortured. Um, and it, and with that kind of thing too, it was always accompanied with death threats. I had guns to my head several times and, um, and sometimes, um, I think in, in this last video, I, I noticed when I was thinking about it, I started holding onto my hands and, um, doing this a lot. And, um, I remember that. Another reason I, I would do something like this probably is because when talking about it is because they would um, force me sometimes to stick my hand out and they would burn me. I would get burned with um, a cigarette lighter or they would um, put something else on my the, the top of my hand that burned really bad and um, sometimes they would cut me with a knife but usually it was a burn on my hand. And then, um, so <clears throat> in talking about some of this, probably my subconscious reaction in, in protecting my hand has to do with that. The other reason I might have done something like this with my hands holding them close together is because, um, Another thing that they were doing to me sometimes was make me put my hands up like this and they would tie my hands if I didn't do what they wanted me to do and they didn't like what I was doing then um, I would get tied up and and um, held away and, and what they would tell, tell me sometimes is um, sometimes they were tying up my hands and then saying um, don't use your hands no, um, only use your mouth, don't use your hands. 
so I would have my hands like this they'd have them um, tied together and um, force me to do this so this was not gangster um, stuff I mean yeah I'm sure that there were a couple of gangsters you know or mafia persons involved in all of this but um, this was coming straight from the FBI from the CIA and the military and you know these are the same groups of people that have been kidnapping all of my babies you know I, I've become pregnant and wanted to raise my own children and um, and the individuals who have been defaming me and calling me mentally ill have very serious reasons for why they want people to think I'm mentally ill because um, of the level of crimes they have committed against me and I mean obviously they were involving this many government individuals and then their kids um, like that's very clear and um, very clearly premeditated um, very serious crimes so this is what Mike was doing um, in his, in this bedroom and at that time on that occasion I did not see any other persons in his house I had been um, in his kitchen area I first showed up and I was in his living room area I saw saw his bathroom and his bedroom it was the first time I saw all of these different parts of his house or apartment and um, <clears throat> I I mean if they were there they were hiding out in a closet or something and I didn't see it but so he um then did said and did the same things that his dad and these other men would do by saying um when I started to do this had this reaction that I I was supposed to have by going over to him and um starting to uh, do like a, a low job like getting picking up the condom for him and giving it to him and um or I was starting to put it on him actually which is what they had me do and um, and then he said he kind of slightly pushed me away after I had it on and um, said no or whatever so something like no and it kind of moved away a little bit like took a step back that's the exact same thing that these government men were doing they were um, <clears throat> they had trained me and told me that that if they said no and they stepped back like a step after um, already signaling to me what they wanted me to do if I accepted that no from them and I didn't um, start saying no you know no I can do it or whatever or, um, continue to do it um, then I was in massive trouble um, that's when they would get the electrocution brace out um, to put on my, on my head and they'd fry my head they um, would get a gun out and, and say, you fucking stupid bitch. Um, um, I, uh, you know that you're not supposed to back off just, just because I say no. They'd say something like that. And, um, and like, don't you remember what we, we told you to do? You know, or, um, I could kill you. And, um, and then they were saying things like, you know, one of these, as I've said before, one of these times you really will be killed it's not going to be a joke and um, no one's going to um, no one's going to just torture you you think that's bad <clears throat> uh, we'll blow your brains out and um, so Mike did the exact same thing exactly the way his dad and these other men had practiced on me when I was a kid um, exactly the same and so here he was um, observing me like he's some kind of um, government fucked up scientist um, <clears throat> you know getting something out of me and um, and and doing this to me and um, you know from everything from the the triggers of my getting a drink from a, a, what he called his bottle to <clears throat> standing in the same stance that his dad was standing next to the fridge when they were doing this kind of thing to me um, 
everything about it was exactly the way they they had programmed me to be you know and so here's the government kidnapping my my babies from me and um and what they told me when I was younger is that um, they'd do it and they'd call me crazy and make sure that I was I would sound crazy unless I allowed them to train my kids and you know what were they training my kids for for that you know that's the kind of thing they were training me to do they were programming me to look like um, like I was the sexual aggressor and to make it appear that they were not raping me and that they were not um, using government gang rape against me and intimidation and torture um, repeatedly for years and then decades you know and then um, they want they want me to uh, let the government be the, the ward and the guardian of my babies well this is what the United States government has been doing and um, and <clears throat> it's really bad so um, so I remember that I just I did what I was um, trained and programmed and tortured to do and I think the government just thought they were successful I think what they took out of that is like yes we, we got it we nailed it um, she's still doing the same things we forced her to do repeatedly and um, good job Mike you know maybe they gave him a raise over at the FBI and um, I'm sure that it was probably being videotaped somewhere with a hidden camera I'm sure that a bunch of government um, people got to see it and um, felt impressed by it but <clears throat> either it was that was done to try to prove how cool the United States government is in um, forcing little kids to do stuff like that so that they can rape them when they're um, older and make it look like it's not rape or it was actually literally being used as a defense to, to um, the other times that Mike had um, raped me when I was under the influence of date rape drugs that kind of thing you know maybe he thought well I need to get this one recorded I know how it works I know how to make her look like she's um, she's the aggressor and I'm the one backing off telling her no and um, you know it was pretty good defense for him when he had raped me twice already and he knew it so uh, that is what happened with that and then he um, he took me back to my house I felt like horrible and um, like I, I just felt sick and then he um, once I got back to my place I realized my ring was gone and um, I had been given a ring um, from my Nana for my 18th birthday and it was a um, green tourmaline ring in set in silver um, sterling silver and all that it said on the inside it had like a little kind of a code thing on it like a mark you know like the maker's mark type of a deal and then um, and then it said sterling on the inside of the band and that was it and so I didn't have it and um, I realized it was either taken from me or <coughs> or I had left it there at his house <coughs> and um, so I called and left a message and said I left my ring over there and um, can you just put it in the mail to me I didn't want to see him again and I I asked him to put it in the mail to him and then he wasn't calling me as much after I left that message and I think it was because he probably knew if I was saying can you put my ring in the mail um, that that was that I mean I wasn't saying can I see you again I was saying um, can you put this ring in the mail and that was it so um, he didn't call me back for a really long time and then I left a couple more messages saying you know I need my ring and um, 
and I would like, and I gave him my address, and I said, I'd like to have you put this in the mail, and mail it to me. 